Okay. G'day everybody, I'm Sam from 3D Printing Revolution and I'll be filming an unboxing today of a Suwei T200. Um, I believe this is the first one to enter Australia, I may be wrong, but um, here it is in the box and it seems to be that DHL have delivered in reasonably good condition. There's a few little dings, but they don't seem very severe and one corner is a little bit crushed, but it um, seems like it's pretty much a straight box. So hopefully we've got a nice straight printer inside. Um, we'll see how well packed it is. So um, I run a small 3D printing business called 3D Printing Revolution. And um, I've got eight printers at the moment. And this makes nine. Oh, hang on. No, this makes eight. Sorry, I had seven. And this makes eight. Um, so... Oh, here we go, instructions. I'll look at that in a second. Okay, so hopefully all the cameras are working what they should be doing and picking things up at good angles. I'll send you another little present. I'll get that one out in a little while. So we've got a toolkit, some USB stuff. Have a look at how this is packed. It's quite well packed. There's a lot of foam in there. At least it looks that way on the surface. So this should be mostly assembled. It shouldn't take very long to do. Okay, that is in trouble. Put some printed parts. I like to see printed parts on my printers. It shows that they test their equipment. Okay, we've got a spool holder. Okay, another piece of pattern foam. Power cord for Australia. Well done. A removable print bed, magnetic flex. Now that guy is limited to 80 degrees. So the way I plan on fitting this into my personal workflow is uh it's actually going to replace my Enders as my 0.4mm nozzle printer and they're all going to get converted to 0.6 Because I believe the 0.4mm nozzle is too small for an Ender and the only reason I had it on there is because I need at least one printer with a 0.4mm nozzle for doing my detailed stuff So this little guy if everything goes to plan, is going to mean that I can put all my 0.4mm nozzles away on the enders and get out some 0 06 and then this little fella will be my mini printer and little things. Okay, so let's just gently place that down there. It does have quite a similar looking um, hot end arrangement to the enders. Have a little look at all this. Okay, I might just refer to the destruction manuals. Dear customer, thanks for choosing us. We appreciate any suggestion and feedback from you to help us improve this printer. Any issues, feel free to contact us. We'd, we'll do our best to fix it. We hope you enjoy your time by making things with this printer. And thanks again, Sue A Team. Look at their website details, etc. And there's some diagrams. We've got a filament sensor, an extruder, some limit switches, motors, heated bed, a um, compact TF card or um, SD card, a screen. I believe it's a uh, touch screen. Power. Content switch.
specs and some basic assembly instructions. Okay. Now I think that the reason that there is not a big complicated in instruction is because there is not a big complicated assembly. I like the quality, or at least the look of the quality of these limit switches with their little it's got a roller on the limit switch. That's incredible. Okay, you don't see that every day. Okay. Well, get the tools out. I really hope that I've picked good camera angles for you people. Get a little bit of filament. Card. I'm get myself some paddles to cut that when I use USB. Okay, so we've got some T-slot nuts. Allen key. Good to see him here. I got all this about as wrong as you could possibly get it and um, we'll explain what I should have done in a moment but what you'll see here is me fumbling around with some T-nuts trying to put them in place without realising that there was actually about four more T-nuts in situ so uh, ignore everything that you see me doing in this part and I will probably run this at a higher speed and just flick through it until I get up to the bit where I start doing it correctly. Um, but what you'll see me doing is trying to line up some T-nuts and trying to put the, the gantry in place and there's other T-nuts already in situ stopping it from sliding in and it takes me a moment to work it out because I'm not looking down on top of it, I'm looking at the side of it ah, and I can't see, see them from I where see, I am. I see. Uh, so just um, laugh at me for a moment until I get up to the bit where I'm doing it correctly. Ah, interesting. So they've actually got some other T-nuts in here. That one wasn't going to be the only one. They've actually got quite a few. Well, the balances. I did not think that was going to balance. Don't do that at home. Alrighty, we're in. So yeah, definitely don't worry about putting those ones in the top first. Um, because I didn't spot them straight away, but there was a whole bunch of other T-nuts already in the slot. So... Trying to adjust the camera a bit more. So um, yeah, definitely uh, don't worry about trying to do that first. there's going to be plenty to support it. So that seems like they've, um, they've got plenty of anchorage points on that beam. There's going to be nuts from underneath, there's going to be nuts from in on the sides. So it's uh, definitely well nutted. There's plenty of peanuts. In hindsight, I should have left these other ones a little bit loose and it would have been easier to align that one underneath. But you live and you learn. Alrighty, well, I think that's um, been the most difficult bit and that was not difficult. It does feel a little bit snug, but I've never used a linear rail before, and I imagine that over the first few um, runs it's probably a little bit snug, but 
There's no sticky bits on it, it just seems a little bit tight across the whole thing. But it does not wobble and it moves. And um, I don't think we're going to have any problems with layer shifts or anything. I would like to see a little bit of support on that cable, so one of my first prints will be a um, strain relief for that. I don't get him on a slightly better angle. I might even make a little baby cable train, that'll be cute as. Do something between that a little bit as well. Maybe slightly longer cables. Don't want that wheel touching there. Underneath that sticker, which I don't want to peel off, there is a head of a nut that I need access to. The bolt's free spinning which means that I can't get that bed level tight. So it's just very thinning. Turn the bolt with it. Okay, so, other than that, we're looking fairly good. I will um, contact the manufacturer and just find out what the best approach is going to be there whether I should just cut a little tiny hole in the top of the mat or whether I should try and peel the mat up. I might warm it up and peel it, we'll see. So I'm going to get some power going to this little guy and turn it on. So I'm happy it's not zapping me. The plug doesn't look like it goes all the way in, but it's, I mean, it's turned on. I would recommend some sort of way to attach the cable a little bit more solidly to there so that it doesn't jiggle and wriggle. I might even, um, once that's in service, I might even hot glue that in. Uh, no, for portability, it's probably good to keep it out. Okay. Yeah, definitely going to have to do something about making that cable fit down a little bit lower. I might get a cable tie onto that and just zip it down low. Having said that, maybe I'm pushing the back bed back further than it needs to most of the time. Okay. Home all axes. Okay, so we've got printed parts. independently home axes as well. Cool. I like that. Get the SD card out. Okay, card goes in. Come and have a look. Go! Oh. Look, it's a little tiny actually size printer. Yay! Okay, let's print something. Let's see what's in the SD card. Now load the filament in. Can you see the filament on out since so? You want me to 3D print a shovel? Okay, I think we're loaded. 
Okay, smashing down the first layer. It's um, definitely needed to be closer on one side. Let's we'll see how it handles life. This would be a good test of the bed surface. It's a little fish bones. That's interesting, isn't it? Do you think it's a fun thing to have a 3D printer at home? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What did we make with 3D printers? I Don't put your fingers in there. Mm -hmm. What did we make with the 3D printers? Uh, uh, animals. Animals, do we? Yeah, and green arrows that you Ooh, like the, the fishy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what about froggies? Do we make froggies? Yeah. Does Daddy make skulls? Yeah. Okay, and about how to set up the slicer software, please check the manual in the SD card, thank you. Okay, so we've completed the assembly. The printing. Is it? Oh, well we'll make it a new little fishy to go with. I can't hold you any longer, you're too heavy. Uh-oh. Okay, we've lost adhesion. I wasn't holding a lot of hope there. Okay, that was good. There was an option to cancel the print and it actually checks that I meant it. Okay, I'm just going to go get some pliers and hold those screws while I tighten them. Yeah, you can take them with you, it's fine. <laughs> I just went the wrong way and spun it off. Well, I can't reach it. To peel or not to peel? That is the question. I think I can get under there. Okay, I'm going to put some super glue down that hole. I'll be back. Just so happened to bought some super glue today. Ultimately, if I could be bothered, I would have peeled those up and put a lock nut on underneath. But I don't want to muck around too much with it in its original state. So a few bits of super glue should do the trick. Now, don't take my word for the safety of using super glue as far as um, when you then heat it up goes. I don't know what temperature it's safe for you to go up to. Okay, so the main camera missed a lot of that, so that's just unfortunate, isn't it? Um, I've basically put some super glue on top of those little nuts, which you would have seen on one of these other cameras. And I'm just tightening up the bed nuts now. Get them all nice and tight.
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to whack a nylock nut on the bottom of that so I can grab it by the nylock nut if I have to in the future. But I don't think it's going to be a problem anymore. Okay. Ah. Okay, here's a potential problem. Not quite go that low. Yeah. Now the potential issue we're going to have here is stuff falling in the fan. So I might recommend a new spot for that, but it's a shame because that's cast into the top of their box. So they may already have hundreds of. Hmm. Okay, if it clears, it clears. It's not going to be going anywhere. That's getting plugged back in and turned back on. So obviously when you're levelling, you're going to have to use the back two corners, or the, the, the two corners that are above there as a reference to the lowest point that you can get away with. The only reason I fiddled with the knobs in the first place was because the cord had bumped it and I could see it swizzling around loosely, so it had to be, um... So it's always important to check your diagonal. I went around that first time just out of laziness. But really, you want to move in diagonals as much as possible. When you're doing this routine. But it's looking like the bed is nice and flat. Now, a lot of people will say use paper. I just go by eye. Looking pretty good all over the bed to me. Okay. They're warming up.
I might just grab that camera. Get in with a few close ups. So the touchscreen seems to be fairly responsive. I haven't actually felt like it didn't press what I wanted it to press. I'm not saying it's a Samsung Galaxy, but it's um, it certainly did the trick. So we've got a 3D printed um, fan shroud. We've got a 3D printed part there. The extruder's a bought one, and that looks to be a better quality extruder than what's on the enders, but that's hard to say without having a really close look at it. But it does have the separate little bit that encapsulates that on there. It's replaceable. Seems to be pretty pretty decent. It's got a steel cog on it, which I like to see. And the push-pull fittings seem to be very sturdy looking ones. A little bit bigger and chunkier than the ones on the ender. So we've got a linear rail. The bed feels really firm. It does not have any wobble in it whatsoever. Might just go a little touch closer. Restart that print. Very quick for first layer. You had to flex the broom off. <sighs> oh, I hadn't pressed confirm to be confirmed that I was printing. Dragged the thing across me nice new sticker. That's okay, you live and you learn. So what would have been the answer then would have been to have paid more attention to underneath clearances when I um, was tightening those off. Did the user error there? We could still do to be a little bit closer, but let it be. Yeah, it is absolutely smashing that first layer down. See, look, the, the, the hot end setup looks more or less identical to an Ender 3. I'm not seeing a lot of differences, and that's a tried and true hot end. Um, I will probably end up having to do the same thing as what you do with the Enders and do the old um, Luke Hatfield trick, but we'll see. We'll see how this little coupler holds up. Might be a good one. And I will actually show the guys at the factory that Luke Hatfield trick and see what they think about doing that from factory. I think that might be a good move.
Okay, so I think that I'm about an hour and a bit in. And I did do a lot of stuffing around and talking. And um, that one little hiccup with those bed nuts kind of sits me up a little bit, but that's sort of the worst case scenario. I don't think it could possibly really take any longer than that to set this up. So yeah, there's a few little things. I think that we, we do need to look at cable management just a little bit. Maybe just um, something to pull that off to the side, just a tad, maybe a little bracket. I mean, it's not touching the threaded rod, but it's close. And being a cord, it could wiggle. Maybe. So yeah, looking at that, there's a few little cable management things. I probably want to whack a few zip ties on and maybe a, maybe print a little bracket in one spot to hold that, to hold that cord down there out of the way. But other than that, it's a pretty neat little bit of gear. Maybe a carry handle on top. 